Today's episode was made possible through the continuing support of the great and wonderful Dax Bourbon. Thank you, sir. Hi there, guys, and welcome back to the shop. It's time for another fun-filled episode of High Voltage Goodness, because I got a welder. My very good friend Ken dropped this off for me. It's, uh, it's junk. And that's lovely, because that's exactly what we want, is a junk welder, because we're going to use this for high voltage fun. We're gonna turn this old welder into an adjustable current limiter. So one of the things we're gonna be getting into pretty soon is different types of transformers. Now you've, you've played with transformers a bit and transformers come in, don't need that, a variety of different types. And one of the big primary differences in transformers is when you make the, the step up from training wheels transformers, your, your first transformer, which is probably gonna be a neon sign transformer, and you step up to bigger stuff that is not current limited. And when it isn't current limited, that means that the transformer will quite happily trip your circuit breakers. And if you keep doing that, you can actually go far enough to burn up the transformer, which is bad and gets expensive really fast. So what we're gonna do is make a device that will let us limit the current the transformer will suck through. So you can limit voltage, like voltage is really easy to mess with. You can do voltage limiting, which is basically just a light dimmer. And the most robust, low tech, bulletproof way to do voltage limiting and regulation is with a variac. But current amperage is a lot more complicated and you can do it in much the same way except of instead of using a variable auto transformer we just use one winding and make an inductor which is ish half a transformer and by changing the reactance, the inductance in the core, which we can do with magnets and miracles, you can vary the amount of current that it allows to pass. Oh, this is so crafty. Look at that. Spider webs. And one of the best places to start with small, medium scale inductive current limiting is getting an old junk welder. Now I have never actually done this before. I've always had just through blind luck and knowing the right people or the wrong people, depending on how you look at that. Um, I've always been able to scrounge up some manner of current limiting and despite having started down this path a few times, even got so far as to procure a really gigantic old welder and take it apart, I've never had the time or the necessity to build a variable inductive current limiter starting by gutting an old welder. So this is gonna be kind of cool. And this video will mark the first step down that path again. And I'm still hunting other welders. So if you are anywhere in the Southwest Michigan area and happen to have an old buzz box laying around, old school arc welder, like a stick welder is what I'm looking for. The kind where it's a big heavy box and it has like a big crank or, or like one big knob, like one, one big thing like that. If it's a modern day electronic thing, it's no good. I need, I need big, old, heavy, crusty, chunky. No, so with, it doesn't have to come with spiders. I don't, I don't, I don't need that. Ah, that's, 
really quite disgusting. But it's exactly what I was looking for. This is, this is it. We're good. This is what we want. So let's dig in, shall we, kids? What we've got is this is a transformer because we've got a big winding here and a, a little winding here. So this is our low voltage winding, high current, and this is our high voltage, low current winding. Now what we can do, depending, I'm going to meter these out, but what we'll probably use is this winding and by adjusting the position of this, which does not at present want to move, but I'll bet we can ask it nicely. Yeah, it's gonna it's gonna need some love. With a little bit of love, I think we can make this work again, but it's gonna need a complete teardown. We're gonna to have to remove these center pieces. But this is where it begins. This is, you can absolutely use this as variable inductive current limiting for your Tesla coil. But I'm gonna to have to clean it up because it's nasty. It's just rusted and gross and we're gonna to have to we're gonna to have to make it look a little better and I'm not entirely sure what this big what's what's going on here let's take this off and see what we can learn All right, so this side, I have laminated iron plates and the magnet should stick to it. The magnet sticks to it. This side, I'll bet the magnet doesn't stick. I have plastic or asbestos or some manner of space age polymer. So by moving this in and out, right there, we have the most active core. We've got eddy currents. It's, it's magnetically reactive. When we go here, all this is removed from the core and it's less magnetically active. So this, in this position, this will pass the most current. When we go here, this will pass the least current because there's more iron in the core to react with stuff. And I think we're onto something. I, I think we got ourselves variable inductive current limiting reactor. It's gonna be cool and that's totally asbestos in there that's that's absolutely asbestos so we're gonna carefully clean this um, as long as we don't grind go grinding anything or anything like that would be fine and I'm probably just gonna replace the asbestos that's in there with like phenolic or something fiberglass we'll see where we end up because this is never gonna get hot it just needs to be non-conductive all right, so that is the whole deal right there. And this is a stepping stone. This is, trying to buy one of these is ridiculously expensive. So being able to harvest one for probably next to nothing is a really big deal because this is the path to being able to use larger transformers. This is what you're gonna need if you wanna have like a pole pig or if you want to have like a big PT or something like that, even MOTS, you can use this with MOTS, a lot of MOTS in fact. This is how you get empowered with the ability to use non-current limited transformers in your home shop. This is, this is how you're going to use big stuff that you can make bigger Tesla coils out of and do bigger, cooler stuff with more power. And you need this. You need to be able to control the voltage and the current. Even if you have a big giant variac stack, if you don't have a way to limit the current, 
you can you can pass whatever you want through your variac stack you can handle the voltage but the minute you start giving her any gas it's going to trip the breaker because you're just pulling infinite current out of the wall this lets you mellow that out and lets you be able to safely control stuff and with this particular one we're going to go through a, a few different types of inductive current limiting with this particular one you can infinitely vary it so you can start all the way in there at maximum reactance this is this is the lowest power and then slowly move this out and increase your current and get more and more and more and more and more as you go and after i get this cleaned up we're actually going to do some preliminary tests with it and we'll show you that moving that does stuff and we might we might make this into a whole project where we have maybe some kind of linear actuator that moves this back and forth with a feedback system and we can actually make this into a whole controlled thing i don't know if i'll do it with exactly this reactor but we'll see what we get i'm hunting other welders i'm looking for a better one i don't know if this is as good as i'm going to be able to find but nose are free and welders are free so like that was just headed for a scrap bin somewhere there are tons of old stick welders like this just collecting rust in the back of some old guy's shop because 20 years ago they bought a mig welder and they upgraded and they quit using the old buzz box please feel free to comment your opinions on stick welders versus mig welders in the comments and why you should learn on one or the other because wow would i love nothing more than to 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 get to read a gigantic exercise in pedantry and just just go just, just right just knock yourself out it's okay I just bought my first welder and it's a MIG because I I wanted the hot glue gun aspect of it. Just pfft, uh, metal stick together. Eh. I'm not a real welder. If I was a real welder, I'd, I'd have started learning with a stick welder. But yeah, comment below. Enjoy yourself. You guys have fun. I'm Chris Bowden. And as always, we'll see you next time.